God said, don't worry. God said, don't let your heart be troubled. Neither let it be, you know, heavy. Don't even, don't even let it happen to you. So we're going to all be in trouble for what we let happen to ourselves. Because that's not God's plan for us. And it is so awesome to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. I'm so glad I get to be here. Amen. I'm so glad you get to be here. Amen. I'm glad that we're all here together. Amen. And that's a great place to be. So let's take our Bibles, if you would, please. And let's go to Jeremiah chapter 5. And we're going to begin reading down verse 20. Go to 31. If you're able to stand, I will invite you to do that. If you're not able, then don't you worry about it. <laughs> Amen. Because <laughs> you don't have to worry. We're going to begin reading verse 20, going down just through the end of the chapter. The Bible says in verse 20 of chapter 5, Declare this in the house of Jacob, and publish it in Judah, saying, Hear now this, O foolish people, and without understanding, which have eyes, and see not, which have ears and hear not. Fear ye not me, saith the Lord. Will ye not tremble at my presence, which I have placed the sand for a bound of the sea by a perpetual decree that it cannot pass? And though the waves thereof toss themselves, yet can they not prevail. Though they roar, yet can they not pass over it? But this people hath a revolting and a rebellious heart. They are revolted and gone. Neither say they in their heart, Let us now fear the Lord our God, that giveth rain, both the former and the latter, in his season. He reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. Your iniquities have turned away these things and your sins have withholden good things from you. For among my people, get that, listen to who he's talking to. He says, for among my people are found wicked men. They lay wait as he that setteth snares. They set a trap, they catch men. As a cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. Therefore, they are become great and waxen rich. They are waxen fat, they shine, yea, they overpass the deeds of the wicked. They judge not the cause, the cause of the fatherless, yet they prosper. And the right of the needy do they not judge. Shall I not, shall I not visit for these things? Say the Lord. Shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? A wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests bear rule by their means, and my people love to have it so. And what will ye do in the end thereof? The title of the message tonight is, What Will You Do in the End? What will you do in the end? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, bless now this time that is gathered in your word as our eyes are are fixed on Jesus, as the psalm says. Our eyes are fixated on you tonight, Lord. Our ears are open to your voice. I pray that it would be that voice they hear, that we all hear tonight, not mine. This is not my message, this is yours. I pray you'd help me. I pray you'd use me tonight. I pray that you'd open our minds and our understanding. I pray that you would bind the devil and his demons and keep them from distracting in this service. I pray that the veil over our hearts would be torn and, and just ripped down. God, that we would just openly, clearly hear what you have to say tonight. Because we need to. We ask that in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. When we speak at the end, that means it's over. Time is out. Stop working. It's the conclusion. Stop running. No more can be done that has been done. When the final buzzer of the, of the basketball game sounds, it's an indication to all that the game is now over. 
There's no more drives down the court. There's no more shots to be made. There's no more way that you, you are going to make a difference in the outcome. The outcome is done because the sound of the whistle happened, signifying the end of it. When you have the end, there can be no more added to the end. It is the end. That is your final score. That is the final standing. And it's important we understand that. The word of God came to the prophet Jeremiah to declare this message in the house of Jacob and publish it in Judah. This in context is speaking to God's people. God's people. What, not the, not the wicked sinners all around? No. You take this to my house and preach this to my people is what he says and sent Jeremiah to do. Would to God the people would listen. Amen? That's what we need to do. In application, we can apply it to believers and non-believers, but all are left with the question asking, what will ye do in the end thereof? You know, I believe God would have me to let you know tonight what you will do in the end thereof as of tonight. We're going to talk about what you're going to do. This is what you will do. You notice there's no option given there. This is, this is what you will do in the end thereof. First thing, you will stand. Right. You will stand. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, the Bible says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 36 and 37, the Bible says this, But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words... Thou shalt be condemned in whatever action that that is. Now, that doesn't mean that your soul's condemned, but it does mean that everything will fall into the judgment of the last day. And we will stand before God. You know what? The Bible teaches that if we judge ourselves, we'll be not judged. I believe if we would be harder on ourselves, judge ourselves for wrongdoing, get it right with God and whoever we've transgressed against, I believe God will spare us that judgment for those things because we did it ourselves. We were hard on ourselves. We, we, we took from ourselves. We punished ourselves. That is a, a, a feeling that is totally out there. It's hard enough to get parents to do that to their children nowadays. But imagine the kid saying, I'm going to punish myself. It would blow the parent's mind and they'd probably lose all their hair at the same time. <laughs> you, maybe, that's, maybe that's happening because there seems to be a whole lot of that out there. So I don't know. I don't know. But see, if we will adapt these things and take these things into account, that you can save yourself some judgment in the end by giving yourself a little bit. If we judge ourselves, then God's not going to say, you know what, hey, I'll add to that. I'll see your judgment and raise you to Lord. He's not going to do that because we've taken it ourselves that we're serious about what we've done. That, we're, that I'm going to punish God. I'm going to save you the trouble. I'm punishing myself. Save you the trouble of having the right. Because you know what? It would be far better for us to judge ourselves than to, than to have God get involved. If, if it's not needed. Because uh, he's really going to get you where it hurts. And we should give ourselves where it hurts. It ought to hurt us. It ought to hurt us when we transgress the law of God. It ought to hurt us. When we're not doing what we should do, it ought to hurt us when we act like we don't care about what God said. It ought to hurt us that, you know, that we've hurt God by the things that we've done, by the things that we continue to do. You will stand, Romans 14, 11 and 12, for it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. 
so that every one of us shall give account of himself to God. So you will stand. Secondly, you will see. Notice he said you have eyes to see, but you see not. You know how many people are willingly just being ignorant? They have eyes to see, but they don't care to see. They don't care to see what God has for them. They don't care to see about that. They want to complain about their situation, but they don't care to see what God has to say, how they can fix it. They don't care about the things of God. They disrespect God. They disrespect the, the word of God. And then they wonder why things aren't working out for them. Well, stop crying a river about your problems. Stop crying a river about why you're, you're all messed up. Because you didn't care about anything that God said that he could make it better for you. You don't even care about the one that can change it all for you. I'm tired of hearing it. I know you are too. Many will try to, 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 to get into that big old pity party. Feel sorry for me when I don't give a care about the things of God. Sorry, I'm not going to feel sorry for you. Because you're, you're digging a hole that you want to be in. Why not? Like, like I mentioned in another message, if I'm in that hole with you, how can I get you out? I can't. You know, the reason that we get tough on kids, the reason we get tough, and sometimes preachers get tough, is because of the fact that we need you to not be in that place. There needs to be something that will wake you up to say, Hey, why am I digging this hole when I should be up there? Why am I sinking down deeper and deeper and deeper when I can be up there? Because that's a place you've got yourself in. Through disregard of the word of God, through disregard of... Being with his people, being in the house of God, reading the word of God, praying. You're willing to let all that slide. That you're gonna, you're gonna, you're going to see. When that when that when that trumpet sounds, brother, let me tell you, you are going to see. You'll see Jesus. You'll see the throne. You'll see angels. You'll see the beauty of heaven. Revelation chapter 20, verse 12 through 15, the Bible says, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things, which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That's nowhere anyone needs to be. That's nowhere anybody needs to choose to go because they want to have their happy-go-lucky little life and they think that if I choose my own way now, I'm just going to be all happy. But you're going to see, but you'll see too late. Right. The purpose of the preacher and the purpose of the parent and the purpose of anybody that's over anybody else directing us is the fact that that we need you to see now, not be when it's too late. Right. When it's too late, then it's too late. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? That's why we as a fundamental, a fundamental independent Baptist church need to fight to maintain the doctrine of the word of God. That we may fight to maintain because once that's gone, what do you have? What can you do? It's gone. It's gone. We got to be careful lest we let these things slip. Once they slip and they're gone, there's nothing for you to hold on to anymore. So it's time that God's people all over the world get out of their phones, get out of their distractions, and get into listening and watching and hearing Amen. and absorbing and stop playing games with God. Because we need you to see it now, not later. 
Later, your life is gone. Later, your, your life is already destroyed and you've counted for nothing and you've done damage to the work of God. Remember, he's talking to God's people. He's not talking to the wicked wretches without. He's talking to the wicked wretches within. Oh, wretched man that I am, we heard that. How true it is. We're still wretched. Would to God we would just save ourselves a little issue, save ourselves a little problem, and actually pay attention now. Oh, what do you mean there was a test? Oh, I guess I should have studied. Oops. Then try to pass it off like you don't care. That's not a test. God's test is not one you're going to have that attitude with. You're going to care. You definitely will. You will see. You will hear. You will hear God's voice. You will hear God's word. There will be no distractions in that day. Your eyes will be firmly locked into eyes of fire as it's explained to you. You're going to hear the truth. I want you to understand something else that ought to shake you to your soul. You are going to hear the screams and the cries of those being hurled into the lake of fire. You, standing in heaven, will hear the screams and the cries as they are not just, you know, the, the, the world likes to act like it's just a little trap door and they fall. No. You know what you're going to see? You know what you're going to witness? You're going to witness the hand of Almighty God gripped around that person, lifted from the ground, and hurled. Hurled into hell! So it's time to get serious. It's time to pay attention. It's time to wake up. It's time to do something while you're able to do it. Because when that trumpet sounds, it's done. Nothing else will you add. You know how sad it is at this thought. This thought rips my heart. How many people will be in heaven because of us versus how many people will be in hell because of us? I, I would say that our silence is throwing more people into hell than our voice is leading to the cross. How many people are going to be in hell because we said nothing because, oh, I don't do that. When you stand there and you see those people, you'll be a part of that witness. You'll stand there and you'll watch those people that you could have had, you could have had a difference made in their life. Maybe they might have listened. You'll watch them pick up and cast. When, when we're talking about casting, we're not talking about just tossing. It's growing. It's a fastball. You will be watch those people thrown into hell into the lake of fire. I had a man one time that was talking to me about his mother. <clears throat> it was a dear friend of our family. I sat there and was in his uh, dining room. We were talking about it. We got to eat. We like to talk about the Bible a lot. And he was always scared to say anything to his mom. I said, you better do something. You better do something. 
and I used this, I used this example with him. I said, the Bible says that we will watch as our loved ones are hurled into hell. Are you telling me that you'll be able, you'll sit back in your salvation and you'll be able to see your mother picked up by the Son of God and thrown into a lake of fire because you're scared to say something? You better think about that. You better find out if you can live with that. All I'm saying is there's a reason that there's a need for him to wipe away the tears from every eye. I believe that's when we'll have the most tears. I don't think we're going to have the most tears when we see how bad we've been in our own sin. I think it will affect us far greater to watch those we could have reached could have made a difference and had we opened our mouth that were in our life, that were good friends, good fa even family, picked up and thrown into a lake of fire and hearing their screams, their cries of pain as they go down. I don't know. But our theme is win one, or win some, and 21. Not sink some. Amen. The theme is not sink some in 21. Win some. You are going to hear. Fourthly, you will understand. Like that old song says, we'll understand it by and by. Farther along. I like that song. It's a good song. You will understand fully what should have happened. You will understand fully what we were expected to do. We will, I, I, I guess I should say we because I'm in there too. I'm not just saying you and I'm exempt. Hey, preachers not only have to worry about that. Do you wonder why it's so exhausting to be a preacher? Because you get to see People ignoring the gospel. You get to see ignoring uh, the ignorance of sound doctrine. You get to see and watch people walk out that have determined they're not going to respond to anything. Knowing that souls are in the balance, not only will a preacher give an account for himself, he'll give an account for his family and his home, and he'll give an account for every single one of the congregants. He'll stand and account. They watch over your souls as one that will, that will give an account. So the preacher not only has to worry about his own life, his own witness, his own spirituality, he's got to worry also about everybody he's preaching to, the lives of his family, their salvation, their walk with God, if they're doing right, then come, study, and pray, and hope to God somebody's going to listen to the Word of God and say, yes, you know what, preacher, that was for me. I needed that, and I'm going to use that, and bless God, I'm not going to walk out that door the same. He's got to give an account for those that would rather not pay attention and walk out, have their lives destroyed, because they don't care. He's got to worry about all that. Souls are in the balance. Am I going to preach something? And, and did I preach everything away? And then there's the aftermath of the message. Did I preach? Could I have used another illustration? Could I have maybe conveyed it a different way? That, that, that somebody would have accepted it instead of rejected it. And you go home. And you, you, get, you, you, know, you get out of the monkey suit. And it's still on you. Yeah. It doesn't go away. And you sit down and you're drained physically, emotionally, spiritually. You are drained of everything. And you wonder how you can even 
remain conscious sometimes because of the weight of the souls that you have been preaching to. And now we have the added, we have the added addition of online as well. Those of you out there in Facebook land, yeah, you're a part of that too. You're a part of that too. And everybody else who will watch now, you know, because not some people aren't watching now, they'll watch later. But it's for the ones that watch later too. For the ones that go out. There's a whole new dimension of stress that comes over the man of God. Yeah. A whole new added. Now I've got COVID to deal with. I've got people not wanting to come because they're scared. I've got people that don't want to do this. Then there's the financial worries of the church, all the church business. How are we going to grow? How are we going to go forward? Uh, let me pray about the vision that we have going forward. How are we going to get the doors open and keep them open? How are we going to have people over people that will teach people, that will, that will take them and train them and care and love them like I love them? Where do you find that? God, I need your help to send somebody to help us build the work of God. That's the cry in a pastor's heart. Amen. One day you'll understand that it wasn't just your preacher getting up and talking for 30 minutes. One day you'll understand the fervency and why sometimes there's no paint left on the walls. Because a preacher that cares will give everything he has to right. reach you. Amen. To reach you. No respect for persons. You need to be reached. But yet, some don't care. Some will look on. But some will understand one day. And they'll wish they'd listened. Fifthly, you will fear the Lord. Yeah. You will fear the Lord. It's better to do it now. Just, just an inside, inside tip. It's better to fear him now. But you will fear him later. Deuteronomy 4, 24. For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28, 29, and 31. Wherefore we receive in the kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Verse 29, for our God is a consuming fire. Now to 31, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. You're going to understand. You're going to fear the Lord. Listen what he said in verse 22 of chapter 5. Fear ye not me, saith the Lord? Will ye not tremble at my presence, which have placed the sand for a bound of the sea by a perpetual decree that it cannot pass it? Fear ye not me? Will ye not tremble at my presence? Oh, but you will. You will. And I will. It's better that we fear him now than we don't because we're going to fear him. That's something that you will do. I wish that this would happen now for every, every person in the house of God. That sixthly, you will have a broken, tender heart. You're going to have compassion one day. You're going you're gonna to have a broken heart one day, a tender toward the people, people that had a rebellious heart and revolt, revolted and they gone away, will be gathered. Once they see the things to come, it's going to break their heart that they live their lives this way, that they chose to ignore him. They chose to disregard him. They chose to just do their own. You're going to have a broken, tender heart. 
and I really wish, really extra wish that we had this one resolved. But lastly, that you will care. You will finally care when you see it's all there. You know, it's it's like that people just think that, well, you know, I know they say it's true, but I'm just gonna live as though maybe it isn't. And then and then when you get to heaven, you hear the trumpet sound, you all get called to heaven and you see all the things that you're gonna see, you're gonna panic. You're gonna panic because you you know what? The rich man panicked. He panicked when he got to hell in Luke 16. He finally decided that he would panic for his brothers. Send Lazarus to my house. Yo, send somebody. Let me go back. I've got five brothers, lest they also come to this place of torment. Let me go help them. Too late. Let them have let them hear Moses and the prophets. Too late will be the decree one day. Too late to care. Too late to do all those things. Too late to be a difference. Too late to be of any use. But that's not right now. It's not. Some people may say it up. Shh, preacher, I don't care. You will. You will. Yet it's going to be too little, too late, too bad. I find where Esau sought like bitterly with tears for repentance and it never came. It's too late for him. It'll be too late for, I fear, some that hear the gospel. Even in a church like this, maybe there are some that won't hear. They won't care and they'll be lost they'll be they'll be of no and, and you know it's, it's a terrible situation even if you seek it carefully with tears you won't be able to change it you may say wow all that sure sounds like the world's way not the Christian's way but is given to Jeremiah to deliver to the people of God. I'll remind you in verse 26 says, For among my people are found wicked men. Among my people. This is not about the world. This is about some worldly people that are in the house of God. That's what this is too. And just a word of warning, the Lord said, Shall not I visit these things? Shall not my soul be avenged on a nation such as this? You wonder why our nation is the way it is. Maybe it's because there's too many wicked among my people. Right. Why do you think that the Bible put in there in and, and, and second, uh, second, uh, 7 14, second Chronicles 7 14, that if my people who are called by my name will what? Humble. Turn from their wicked ways and humble themselves and pray, then and seek my face. All those things, then. Will I hear from heaven? Then I'm going to heal. Well, that's when the healing is going to come. But you know something? As I look around our nation, I believe God is avenging himself yeah. on our nation. Amen. And you want to blame the abortionists. You want to blame the sodomites. You want to blame the who's up on Pennsylvania Drive. But it God said it's my people. My people among my people are found wicked men. And shall not I visit these things? Shall not my soul be avenged on a nation such as this? The problem is the Christian in the United States of America, yeah. not the rest of the world. That's right. And until the church gets that through their thick head. We're in a whole lot of struggle, a whole lot of problem. 
We bring it upon ourselves. We always want to blame everybody else. If you're here without the saving knowledge of Christ in your soul, be assured that all this will happen to those who are not saved as well. If you're listening, you're on the internet, you're listening, you're watching, is there a time that you realize that you're a sinner in need of a Savior? The Bible says to confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised them from the dead and thou shalt be saved with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation and whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's a belief. It's a confession. And it's an action. And God will give you instant whether you're here or whether you're there, that needs to be made. That choice needs to be made while you have time. Do you think, oh, I'm young, I've got plenty of time? No, you don't. You may not. Death comes swiftly and uninvited. God said, my spirit will not always strive with man. That means he's only obligated to knock once. He's only obligated to ask you once. I'm glad he's alone suffering because he loves us that much. But there'll be there'll come a time when that knock at your heart's door will cease. Where the spirit is no longer saying, come and receive him today. The spirit will stop drawing. And you can't be saved when the spirit don't draw you. That's right. The only way to be saved. You can't just get saved any old time you feel like it. You can only do it when the spirit of God draws you unto salvation. Yeah. You have an opportunity. You don't have a promise of tomorrow. That's why Jesus said, now is the accepted time and now is the day of salvation. Don't wait till the time runs out and there's no more opportunity to change the direction of your, of your soul's destiny. Change it now. Open your heart. Open your soul. Open your life to Christ and let him make something beautiful out of your life. Let him do it. Open your heart. What do you possibly have to lose? You stay the way you are and you gamble that, that this is all just some joke. You lose it all, friend. With no hope of ever regaining it. Make that choice. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Ask him to come in and forgive you of your sin and become the Lord of your life. The next step is to be baptized as a sign of obedience, not as a secure of your salvation. Get in a local church. Find one that preaches the Bible. The Bible. God's word. Let him do something with your life. Let him make something out of you. We're going to come for the invitation. I don't know who it's spoken to, how it's spoken to you. That's up to between you and the Lord and the Holy Spirit of God. The altars are open. If you have a spiritual need here tonight, you want somebody will take. I don't. I don't. This is more important than any rules and regulations. If you need to be saved tonight, someone will take a Bible and they will show you how to do it. They will show you and lead you and help you find Jesus before it's too late because that is important. Our altars are open.
Or you can see one of us after if you need, or you, if you don't want to come, that's fine. You can use your chair as a, as a make your chair the altar, but lift up your heart unto the Lord. Am I one of these wicked people? You know, I know this is not the song that we're going to sing. This is a great song. But I think of search me, O oh God. I know my heart. That's what we need. But, you know, before you can search it, you have to surrender it. Don't surrender some. Surrender all. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we need you right now, God. We need the Holy Spirit of God to fill this place. May you speak to your people. Draw them, Lord. I've done my part. I would love to stand up here for another hour, try to convince, try to, try to do all that I can do. We don't want to have these people stand before the Lord and totally be wrecked by grief, wrecked and destroyed inside. And there's no more hope that they can provide. Nothing more they can do. I pray that you would help now in Jesus' name. Amen. As we sing. Oh,